All right, so you think Betaflight 4.0 is too complicated. So let's see if we can simplify it. Okay, so this topic has come up before. I really remember it with 3.4. It didn't come up with 3.5 so much because that was only like two months after 3.4 was released. It's usually centered around the PID tuning tab, so we're going to skip right to there. And before we talk about PID tuning, as I always say, you've got to get your filters squared first. So we're going to go right to the filters tab, and we're going to talk about this here. The first thing I need to say is if you're somebody that's not into reading up on stuff and are interested in a little bit of complication, then forget the RPM filter. I'm sorry, the RPM filter is a good thing in Betaflight. You don't need it. I've done some tests and shows that the dynamic notch just with the dynamic low pass filters is still pretty robust and pretty competitive when you look at the overall flight pit error. I'll do a little bit more testing on that between RPM and non-RPM and I'll publish those results in a little bit. But nevertheless, the other thing with RPM is the BL Heli firmware is still in beta. So if you're flashing that BL Heli firmware to all four ESCs and getting it all set up and getting the telemetry working and you know it's complicated and you're on beta BL Heli firmware so you're beta testing at that point. It's in stable release, this beta flight's in stable release but the BL Heli is not. So if that's something you're not into then just forget RPM. When it comes down to this tab down here uh, I, I think if you're kind of novice to it, that we are finding that, hey, we might have been a little over aggressive in the filtering. So what I'm going to recommend here is go ahead and turn on low pass 2, set that to 100 hertz, and then also change low pass 2 for the D term, set that to 100 hertz as well. That will give you a nice conservative uh, filtering that you're not going to have any, you know, weird events. Um, obviously, as these low pass filters are moving up with your throttle, that's going to give you more aggressive phase delay. It's going to, also going to give you a little bit less filtering uh, on the low end stuff. You really should only be having noise from 200 hertz up to 500 hertz on like a five inch rig, but that's not the case for everybody. Some of these frames have weird resonance frequencies down low at 100 hertz. We're finding out and. Um, didn't come up honestly in all the beta testing. So yeah, I would do those two things, set those on. Go ahead and fly, it should be fine. Uh, what I would work towards is then turning off your low pass filters. It's kind of just that simple. These other settings for the mins and maxes, I have videos on that. I will link in the upper right hand corner. It talks about all the details and how you can set those and really optimize them. But honestly, you're kind of really threading the needle. I've done a lot of testing and I come back to essentially these settings anyways. Uh, you know, I have my max here set to 510. You're trying to set it at your top end of your peak motor noise range. If you are here and you have a whoop class or a micro or a, you know, some five inch recommendation settings I have here as well to kind of thread that needle and tune it a little bit better. Six inch, here's some paste. You can just, if you have a six or seven inch, just grab this paste, go copy paste, go to the CLI, paste it in hit enter and then type save and that will change the settings to my recommended preset for a six inch seven inch then you can go back and kind of look at what's changed and now when you go back into the filters tab for example you can see the recommended settings there for a seven inch again if you want to be a little bit more conservative you can turn on these low pass twos put them at both at 100 hertz to make sure you know your first flight's not going to have anything unexpected you know i don't you know we're trying to make default presets i don't know how noisy your craft is or how little noise your craft is you know this is just carte blanche just trying to make some defaults out there but uh, ultimately again you want to try to work towards having your low pass two filters turned off okay hitting reset back to our out of the box defaults uh, moving over to the PID settings tab, I did a video, I'll link that up in the upper right, it was two of them, talked about all the different settings in here, and just some briefs, what those do and how you, know, you might incorporate them into your tune. But if you really wanted to start from scratch, like I want to tune this thing from scratch, uh, what I would recommend doing is turning your D-min off, which is on by default, you set those both to zero, make sure all these things are turned off as well. Uh, you could leave these the same. The only thing I would recommend here is setting this to gyro and then setting the cutoff to 11. That's in one of those pace and also in that video. After that, I would set your feed forward to zero here as well. And then I would tune your PID controller. You know, tune your PI and D. 
Uh, Stinger Swarm video is a great one on that. Basically doing sharp moves left to right, things like that. Uh, do uh, flips and rolls. You're trying to you know, really get your, st your stepped response tuned out, but that's no different than how it's ever been. After you have your PID controller tuned, if you want more sharp feel, well, that's when you start to crank up feed forward. It goes from zero up to 2,000. Go wild on it, whatever you want to do. Here with D-Min, I have a video on that as well. I'll link that up to the upper right. You can go use that as D-Min to suppress your D-term if you wanted to have basically smoother flights or have your D kind of lower until it's really needed, then it would go up to your max settings here. Or I like it a little bit more aggressive to help with pop wash, where I kind of flip that around and talk about that in the video where I have my these settings that I would have my tune settings up here, and I put those down under the mins here, and then I crank this up to like 55, 60, or whatever. You can really boost it up quite a bit, honestly. And then the, the gain here, which adjusts how quickly that will boost up to those max values. Uh, I recommend setting that to 45 or 50. You know, that I didn't go into a ton of detail right there, keeping it brief. If you want details, go check out the Betaflight 4.0 tuning guide or check out my video on D-Min. I'm going into details there. If this is too much and you're like, ah, D-Min's, I don't want to do it, just don't turn it on. You don't need to use it. It's only an option. Some of these other values, like I-term rotation, I think if you're FPV, you just don't need period. Feed forward, smart feed forward, you definitely don't need. Do not turn that on. It's going to go away anyways. Integrated jaw, you don't need that either. Absolute control, that can help you reduce some pit air. It's still a little, it's, it's pretty new, so you can check it out and try to use it, but if you don't want to, then don't. I don't use it right now. I haven't really messed with absolute control, and I've been using Betaflight 4.0 for like nine months now. So that's really it. Kind of briefed on the filter settings, briefed on the pit tuning, so to me it's not that overly complicated. I think I covered this in, I don't know, whatever the timestamp is down below. And uh, thanks everybody, and I hope this did help. One thing I, before I get off here, I do want to get on my soapbox a little bit. The, I made a post on my Facebook page about open source projects. People do constantly confuse Betaflight like it's a company. It's an open source community project by volunteers. So make sure, please, to be constructive in your, if you have criticism, or better yet, be praising. These people are volunteering their time to contribute and make this better firmware. There's a couple factors in criticism, like you don't need to use it. They didn't sell it to you. You didn't buy it. Um, and if you criticize volunteers in anything, like any community organizations, or you know, if you're part of the fire department or anything like that in your community, you start criticizing the volunteers, guess what? You're not gonna have volunteers. And if we don't have volunteers, we're not going to have beta flight or any flight software. If you just don't like it in general, well, there's flight one, there's clean flight, there's drone in, there's silverware, there's uh, kiss, there's lots of alternatives. Nobody's making anybody upgrade to beta flight 4.0. Nobody's making anybody use the features, and nobody's making anybody use beta flight in general. Um, I know it, it, it's a little tougher for beta flight. I really feel because it is used by far from what I can see by like 200,000 users based on the statistical data they download and you know it's going from whoop to X class I don't believe any other firmware and I could I, I don't think I'm wrong on this I don't believe any other firmware has such a big user base and such a broad class from whoop to X class and is totally volunteers no 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 nobody paid so just keep that in mind with criticisms and um, definitely read the article about open source projects and how that works and how the concerns are that if people are too overly critical they die and I don't want that to happen I know these guys you know thrive on people's appreciation and everybody does that's how humans work. They thrive on appreciation. So I appreciate everybody's efforts that went into Betaflight all the time, especially the maintainers, uh, because that is not always the most glamorous work, and it's kind of really banging out stuff that might not be the most fun, but it needs done. So those guys, um, thanks again for all your efforts, and if everybody could join me in saying, hey, you guys, we really appreciate what you are doing for the community. Keep it up. You know, if there's something you see it can be made better, 
the best way is to jump in and start to help out. Uh, if you're not able to do that, to please keep it in an avenue of trying to solve a problem, not just be critical. I think sometimes I see, I see a lot of posts on Facebook that are, people are just trying to get attention um, and it's not helpful and um, I don't appreciate it. So <laughs> just from my personal standpoint, because uh, I don't want to get these people to sway. In the past year, there has been some maintainers that left the project because of you know, people being overly critical on drama and stuff like that. So we don't need any of that. Um, keep that kind of sidelined. If you can, if you haven't personally done that, you know, if you could help police that a little bit by, you know, tamping it, that helping tamp it down if it does come up. Um, I know I would appreciate it. I try to do the same. And uh, yeah, thanks again, everybody. Hope this helped.